Hi everyone, my name is Taylor and I work in marketing here at Random House. Today we have an Inside the House series for you and I'll be joined by my colleague Justine um, to talk about her job in publicity. I'm gonna quickly pin a comment to the top here so that people who tune in later will know what we're talking about and then we'll have Justine join us. All right, comment is pinned and I have Justine's request. So just take a second. But feel free to tell me where you're tuning in from and what you're reading. Um, and especially if you have any questions for Justine. Hi. Hi there. Can you hear me okay? Yeah, I can. How are you? I'm great. How are you? It's so good to see your face. <laughs> I feel like it's been a while. I know, right? At least it's been a while since like we've seen like one-on-one -on -one face, not on like a thousand people on a Zoom call. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, so I want to preface for the speaker who are tuning in that for the Inside the House series, this is a series where we tell you kind of about what we do here at Random House. So Justine, I obviously know who you are and what you do. <laughs> so forgive these these questions that may make it seem like I don't. Um, oh, but do you want to start by telling us about your job at Random House? Sure. Well, um, my name is Justine McGowan. I'm a publicity assistant at Random House. I've been at Random House for over two years now, which is insane that I celebrated my two-year anniversary far, far away from the office. Uh, um and as a publicity assistant, I work directly with authors and agents and editors and our marketers, of course, um, setting up earned media. So that's pitching book review editors and books producers and getting radio interviews and all that fun stuff and setting up author tours, which, you know, in the days of yore uh, meant coordinating author travel and working with bookstores and offsite venues. And now it's setting up virtual events, um, which has been really quite exciting since like really we had to become Zoom experts very, very quickly. <laughs> totally. Um, so you've covered a little bit about what your job in publicity means. Is there anything else that you want to add about kind of the in-depth day in, day out? I mean, it's an exciting job since it changes moment to moment almost because since we're so dependent on what's happening in the media. And especially over the last few months, it feels like the headlines are constantly changing and we're constantly having to figure out like how can we position this book so that it's relevant or so that it's in the best possible view really um in whatever particular moment that we're dealing with yeah it's exciting <laughs> keeps you on your toes right now doesn't it yeah totally <laughs> um, and how did you get your start in publishing I had kind of a roundabout route um I initially moved to New York to attend an acting studio and I, I know I'm like fun fact, Taylor, you didn't know that about me. <laughs> I did not know that. Um, and I spent about roughly two years um, as a student and auditioning and realized that, you know, that totally wasn't for me. But my love of books had always been around. And I just thought, well, I want to work in publishing. We're going to do this. And so I attended the Columbia Publishing course. Um, and somehow got an interview at Random House almost immediately after I finished up. It's the only job interview that I went on. <laughs> and it was just like, you want me? Hell yeah, I'm going to work at Random House. This is so awesome. Because like, it's everything. We work on every big book. It's amazing. Yeah, it was just meant to be. It was faded. Yeah. Um, so this wasn't always what you wanted to do. But I love that you were kind of a lifelong bookworm. Oh, totally. I, I have a cousin who jokes about how he doesn't recognize what I look like without like a book covering half my face. <laughs> and I love the shelves behind you. They're gorgeous. Thank you. I cannot take credit. This is my mother's <laughs> office. <laughs> they are my rubber ducks, but. <laughs> um, so what is your favorite part of the job of publicity? Honestly, I love the pace and I, I love working with authors. It's it's a privilege really to be with them as their book is really just like about to go out into the world. It's when they're most worried and they really need a supportive hand. And I, I love doing that. I love being there for them um, and helping their stories get told and get out there and, and find the right readers. Yeah, there's something I think so special about when you're able to get the exact right media coverage for a book and things just kind of work out. It's, it's the best totally. feeling. Totally. Or if, it, if an author has like been trying to get on NPR for book after book after book and like we finally get it, it's like, yes, we did it. <laughs> Amazing. Do you want to tell us about some of the books that you've worked on? Oh my goodness. So I 
got thrown completely into it when I first started because um, Jody Pico was going on tour for a spark of light. And that was my first author tour. Like I had nothing to do with the setup or anything, <laughs> but I had to be in the office making sure that everything ran smoothly from home, which was intense and stressful, but Jody is the sweetest person on the planet. Um, and I mean, I worked like pretty across the gambit since my, both the people that I support have, you know, worked across the Random House imprint lists and, you know, I've worked with Ruth Reichel and um, that was such an exciting and wonderful tour and Save Me the Plums is such a beautiful book. If you're looking for a food memoir, I highly recommend that for anybody. This past spring, you know, I had the, the privilege of working with Wes Moore on his latest five days, which is um, about Baltimore in 2015 and the days um, after Freddie Gray's death. Uh, and it's an incredibly powerful book and happened to be coming out at such a powerful moment. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's always exciting, you know, and then I you know, got to work with celebrities like Judd Apatow and um, you know, last summer was John Meacham and Tim McGraw in the <laughs> first Songs of America, you know, it's just, it's always been fun. Yeah, so that's quite a range of books. You have some really big commercial fiction, some literary fiction, all types of nonfiction. Yeah. Do you have a preference for genre either to work on or to read personally? My favorite genres to read are actually sci-fi fantasy. Um, like The Space Between Worlds, one of our books this past summer, I'm obsessed with it. It's the most beautiful thing ever. Um, and I grew up like obsessed with Harry Potter and Lord of the Rings and, you know, that kind of world. Um, I do credit the fact that I wrote about The Passage by Justin Cronin on my job application <laughs> and how I ended up here. Um, Amazing. So. Great. Well, so for those of you who are just tuning in, this is Random House Live with just Justine Magwin, who is a publicity assistant at Random House. Um, and Justine, I have, I've heard the rumor that you're working on Ernie Klein's new book. Is this true? I am. I'm one of the publicists for Ready Player Two, the much anticipated sequel to Ready Player One. We're so excited for fans to read it when it comes out on November 24th. So just before Thanksgiving, um, and I can't share any other information <laughs> besides that. We're, we're just, we're very excited about it. And, uh, you know, you can check out his, his appearance for New York Comic Con on Friday when it's up on their YouTube page at 10 a.m. That's all I got. <laughs> yeah, well, that's a great question, actually. So how does your job change when a manuscript is embargoed or you, can, you can't do that kind of early outreach for media in the same way that you might typically? It's definitely a little more difficult. Um, you know, it, we want, you know, we can get advanced copies, like if it's absolutely necessary for really big, big media, mm -hmm. but it's, it's, it's very hard. I mean, we, we have, we've really done everything that we can. Um, but every person who asks for a copy, every time we're pitching media, it's, we can get it to you in November, like everybody <laughs> else. No special privilege <laughs> this time. Yeah. Um, one of our colleagues, Emma, here asked a great question. She wants to know kind of about how our event strategy has changed in the past couple of months now that we're all virtual. Do you want to talk a little bit about that? Yeah, sure. So, I mean, depending on the author, you know, author tours can range from, you know, two or three bookstores to, you know, 15 to 20, you know, if you're a Jody. Um, <laughs> And like the best example I can give you is actually that this past spring, we were going to send Wes Moore on an eight to 10 city tour. And he ended up doing, I think, closer to four to six events. Um, you kind of have to change it up in terms of the, the number of stops that they're making, really, just because, you know, you can access everything from home. And you have to figure out a way to say like, okay, well, this author is doing five events. How are we going to make every single event something special? And I do think that that comes around when, you know, that comes, it's important when it comes to like the moderator choice or whether or not you're going to do something special or, you know, have theme nights or something like that. So in some ways, you know, you're not booking travel, but you have to do a lot more 
mentor work to kind of make these events special and different each time. Yeah, a little. And you don't have to, but it's, it's, it's nice to be like, okay, so he's, you know, they're going to do an event with this bookstore in Austin, Texas, and then we're going to do Powell's in Portland the next night and not have to worry about like, is there a flight that can get there in time? <laughs> Yeah, I know travel delays, at least, maybe some tech issues, but... <laughs> yeah, I mean, tech issues usually resolve themselves in a couple minutes versus, like, who knows about a delayed flight anymore? <laughs> right. Um, and Karen had a great question. Karen Fink in here wanted to know if you have a favorite author interview. Favorite author interview? Um, honestly... Judd Apatow did a fantastic interview for Fresh Air um, oh. last fall in conjunction with his book that he edited. Uh, it's Gary Shandling's book, which was um, a collection of photos and and other images and you know old joke drafts and on Gary Shandling, you know his his mentor, like his absolute legend in comedy. And he did this really wonderful interview with Terry Gross, and Terry made him cry, and it was just really wonderful. <laughs> Because it was just like a beautiful, emotional, honest moment. And I love when that sort of thing gets captured. Yeah. Um, well, you have so many great questions in the comments here. But I want to quickly remind everyone that this is Random House Live with Justine Magowin talking about her job in publicity. Um, so we've covered kind of the ins and outs of your job and some of the books that you're working on. What do you read? What are you, like, what are you reading right now? Not for work. Not for work. I'm about to start The Searcher by Tana French. Ooh. I love her mysteries. I've read all of her books. Um, my family are all totally obsessed with the Dublin murder series. Um, and they're very excited at the fact that I will actually order a book so that they can <laughs> also read it. Um, but yeah, I'm really, I'm really excited to read that. I am, um, I'm listening to Dirt by Bill Buford. Oh, um, yeah. yeah. Oh, here's it's, a great question. Oh, yeah. sorry. That's okay. No, no, no. Um, do you read every book that you work on for your PR campaigns? I familiarize myself with every book that I work on. Um, you know, some I read a little more in depth than others, depending on you know, the subject matter. And like, like nonfiction, I feel like you really have to get down into the nitty gritty. Um, but, you know, since I am an assistant and my bosses are wonderful, you know, they allow me to kind of say, you know, I really want to be more involved on this title versus that one. And, you know, that's just, I read as much as I can, but it's, it's difficult. You know, I, <laughs> when you work on so many books a year. <laughs> a lot of books. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> How many books are you working on at any given time, roughly? Uh, it's around two books per month per boss. Okay. I think that that's like the average is like two to three books per month. But if you double that, then that's like 48 books a year. It's a lot of books. It's a lot that's to read. a lot of books. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, I usually read about two books a week, but it's, it's so hard. Yeah. And someone, another question we had was, do you have any advice for aspiring publishing professionals, specifically those looking into publicity? Absolutely. I think that, you know, it's important to keep an eye on, what people are publishing um, and, and looking for the kind of books that you want to work on. Um, I think that having that extra touch of being able to say like, I'm familiar with the stuff that you, that you guys make and that's what I want to do. That's what I want to be involved in is really important. And I, I know that this opportunity isn't available for everybody. I know they've been trying um, to make it more accessible, but programs like the Columbia Publishing Force or NYU's program, or I think there's one in Colorado um, are incredibly helpful. You know, I, I'm not going to lie that that's, that that's not a great resource to use if it's available to you. And I know that we're all working on making our recruitment a little more accessible right now. Um, and, you know, I, I just, I say go for it, you know? Yeah, Refresh those job listings and just keep applying until something sticks. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, <laughs> another question that I have for you is, do you have a favorite media outlet for books cover? Just the one that you look for for recommendations? The New York Times Book Review. I know that's super basic, but I <laughs> particularly look at their um, editor's choice. Oh, yeah. Yeah. They have great recommendations. Yeah. Definitely. That's like my go-to always. <laughs> and do you, do you read that in print usually or online? 
let's be honest. I read it when we get the bestseller list in advance. <laughs> yeah, of course. Um, I feel like I get all of my books information from Instagram and Twitter, but I work in marketing. So it's just funny that it's a little bit different. Yeah. And I'm also currently with my parents and they subscribe to the paper. So it's nice to actually have the physical New York Times paper in the day and Wall Street Journal. And stuff. Yeah. I feel like my mom always has People magazine. And they actually have a great book spread. Yeah. Um, with like, huge jackets and everything. So that's one yeah. of my favorites. Um, are there any books that you're really looking forward to that you want to tell us about? I'm really looking forward to a book that you and I are both working on, I believe. The, the Dictionary of Lost Words by yes. Pip Williams. Um, it's coming out next spring in April. Yes, yes. April 6th. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> like, um, <laughs> it tells, this, for those of you that you know don't work with us, uh, <laughs> it tells the story of a, a young woman named Esme. She's growing up in Oxford when the Oxford English Dictionary is first being printed and compiled. Um, her father is one of the, was one of the lexicographers um, making it. And it's just, it's the perfect thing if you are a person who loves words a lot, which I am. I used to just hang out and look at the OED to look at etymology for fun. Not that long ago. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Yeah, that's a really great one. I'm excited. Um, I cannot wait to share more about that with all of our, our readers soon. Um, there was another great question here for you. What is the most challenging part of your job in publicity? I love working with authors and agents. I do, but a lot of the time they're the most challenging part. Yeah. You know, I'm, that might not be the nicest way to say that. It's a lot to but, manage, for sure. You know, everybody has expectations, and sometimes, you know, you try and you try and you try to to get the coverage that people really want, and you know in your heart that this book would do, you know, would, would be a great person, like, would be a great candidate to have, you know, a giant interview in, you know, the Wall Street Journal or what have you, and sometimes it just doesn't work, and it's really hard to be like, I believed in this book so, so much. And it didn't work yeah. out, but we're going to keep trying every day. We just keep on trying. And sometimes it's like making pasta where you're like throwing it at the wall. Yeah. Well, some books <laughs> take off right away and, you know, some really take a lot longer. Um, yeah. It's, you know, everybody. Yeah. I mean, you know, another author that you and I both worked with, David Fagenbaum, uh, with his book, Chasing My Cure, it, it took yeah. you know, several months for us to get him on fresh air, but we did it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Yeah, that was a great book. Um, an, a national bestseller many, many months later. So yeah. the timeline is definitely different for everyone. Yeah. Um, well, this is most of my questions, but I have one more before we go. I'm curious if what you do when you're not working on books or reading for fun. Yeah. Um, I write songs. I am an amateur singer-songwriter. I've got a piano down here. Um, back in New York, I've got my guitar and my ukulele and I just sit down and attempt to write like five, six chord songs. They're very like Taylor Swift, Ingrid Michaelson, like sad girl music, but it's something that makes me feel good. So. Amazing. I did not know <laughs> that about you. I love my love doing this series. Um, well, thank you so much for joining us today, Justine. This was really fun for me and for a lot of our viewers too, based on the comments. Thank you for having me. Yeah. I'll see you on Zoom later this week. Yeah, girl. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. Bye, everybody.